and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited today to be talking about setting goals and goal setting and the process that I use to accomplish things. I was just sitting down today thinking about what were some of my goals for 2019 and going into 2020 and I thought it would be a good idea for a video to kind of break down what my goal setting process is. Different people might have different systems or a different process and way of doing things but a lot of it can be somewhat ineffective if it isn't truly broken down. So I thought I would go over real quick what my process is when it comes to setting goals. Step one is that I start with a feeling. And what I mean by that is I kind of look at a period of time, say 10 to 20 years, a long off period of time, and I think to myself what I want to be feeling after 10, 20 years based off of um, something that I'm setting right now. So an example could be traveling. I would say in 10, 20 years, I want to feel like I am saturated with experiences, like I have traveled a lot and that I have seen many things. That is kind of the feeling I want to create in myself. Like I use my 20s and early 30s to really live. So that is the feeling that I want to create and that is step one. Step two in the process of goal setting is to break down that kind of abstract what I want to be feeling in a long period of time and breaking it down into a concrete objective. And what I mean by that is we can't just keep it in the abstract of, oh, I want to be traveling lots of places because then nothing really specific will get done. And so step two for me is breaking down, okay, in 10 years, what is the specific objective that I want to hit? And breaking it down in kind of a numerical sense is what makes a lot of sense for me. And so using the same example of traveling that I used before, for traveling my objective, and I kind of thought about this a lot, I wanna see a multitude of different places, experience different cultures, so I thought about maybe it could be visiting the different continents or checking off some of my items on my bucket list, which is like constantly growing, but what I came down to is seeing the seven wonders of the world and that for me felt like a very digestible but yet very ambitious goal and so I think ambitious like a goal that scares you is really what's the objective here because if it's like an easy one where it might be oh see five new states that for me is a fairly like a fairly basic goal seven wonders of the world will take me to continents I've never been to, to go to South America, to go to the Middle East, and that will be a challenge, but a challenge that is accomplishable. Step three is then plotting it out and breaking it down in a um, very systematic way from, it could be any kind of breakable series of time, like every two years I want to do this, or every year I want to do that, or in six months periods of time, however it works for your specific goal, break it down and plot it out. So if I still had the goal, oh, I want to see the seven wonders of the world in about 10 to 20 years, then that's still so broad that I don't know what to do with that yet. So what I actually did, <laughs> I plotted out each wonder of the world and assigned it to a year for the next seven years. Now I've already seen the Roman Colosseum. That was amazing. I've actually seen it twice because I studied abroad in Paris and for our spring break, we went over to Italy. So that was the first time I saw it. And then the second time I saw it was with my husband, Paul, when we went honeymooning in the Mediterranean, we saw the Roman Colosseum then and we got a picture of us together with it and that was our first wonder of the world that we've seen together and then i have this whole concept of with that picture and with each of the wonders of the world that we see i want to create kind of a frame showing each of the wonders of the world that we've been in and that'll be so cool <laughs> if we can get to that i essentially created for each of the other wonders so in 2018 we saw the roman Colosseum. For 2019, we have booked a trip to Peru to see Machu Picchu, and that is the second one. And in so I just broke down the other five wonders of the world per for each year. So 2020, I have written down Chichen Itza, which is in Mexico. In 2021, I wrote down Taj Mahal. 2022, I have Christ the Redeemer, which is uh, Rio de Janeiro. 2023, I have Petra, which is in Jordan, which I think we'll end up doing a Mediterranean cruise there because cruises actually do end up going there. So it might be a little bit of a safer way to travel to the Middle East. And then in 2024, I have written down the Great Wall of China. And so by 
I'm sure these will jump around and these will not be specifically on those years but by breaking it down like that I have a goal and I can plot it out and see okay I have to do at least one of these per year in order to achieve this goal. So step number four in this goal making process of mine is to then find the nearest large milestone. So even if you break it down some pretty large goals it kind of can be intimidating like how am I going to make this happen even though I have one world wonder assigned to one year how am I, how am I going to make it happen so my system usually looks at the next kind of larger period of time but not untangible so it could be six months it could be a year it could be two years for this system it's a year and that was looking at Machu Picchu so since we have already seen the Roman Colosseum my next goal was what's the next wonder we're gonna do and Peru came to mind. I got really excited about that one. And so Machu Picchu became the next milestone that I was going to zone in on and focus my efforts on. So the rest of the wonders have kind of taken a back seat or, and I place them on the back burner of my brain, knowing that I'll see them at some point, but my efforts right now is going towards Machu Picchu and Peru. Step number five, I would say, is the most difficult part for me. And I think most people start their goal setting from what I use as my last step. So my last step is actually to create a checklist in order to create that nearest or get to that nearest milestone. And so I think most people usually start with that thinking, what can I do now to build up to it? Whereas I start big picture and then I get down to, okay, now I need a checklist in order to get there. And checklists, I love making them, but I don't love following through on them. That is a definite weakness of mine but they it could look like I need to start saving money for this. Um, I know I can travel fairly affordably based on some habits that I've picked up, but I still need to save for it. So I redid some of my habits and I started saving all of my cash tips from work and put all of that towards travel um, savings. So that was my goal there. But breaking it down into just a tangible checklist would be the hardest part of, I think, of goal setting is to realize, okay, so this is my goal in a year. What can I do every month in order to get to that goal in one year? And break it down even further, what do I need to do every week in order to get to that goal? And then what do I need to do today to get to that goal? So it's really breaking it down and breaking it down in that sense is probably the most challenging to follow through on, but it can really yield some pretty exciting results when you do follow through on it. The last part of goal setting, and I wouldn't necessarily call it a step because it is just beginning the process. So it could be a six step, but I more so just think of it as jumping in. And so for me and for my personality type, I need to force myself to commit to things in order for me to actually commit to them. <laughs> for this Machu Picchu trip, I knew we wanted to go. I knew we wanted to go to Peru. We were kind of looking at times of year that might be good. And for me, jumping in involved just buying a plane ticket. And buying a plane ticket really committed to me like, okay, we are now going to Peru. <laughs> Should probably start making some other reservations as far as where we're staying, when we're seeing Machu Picchu, like what town's closest how we're gonna get there, what are the tr like, travel's gonna be like. And so that for me was jumping in, was just booking the plane ticket. And that was the doorway into what my larger sense of a travel goal is. And so for me, it involves like verbally committing to something, monetarily committing <laughs> to something, something that I can't go back on and our plane tickets are not refundable. So whether or not we like it, we're going to Peru in October. <laughs> Essentially all of the breakdown of goal setting that I usually do when it comes to goals big and small, whether it is traveling, which is the example I use for this video, but I'm also using this process right now to create some money and financial goals for myself, to create some job goals for myself, where I want to be in a career, to create some writing goals for myself, as I love writing, some personal brand goals for myself. I just really broke it down to see where do I want to be in 10 to 20 years? What do I want to feel starting with that feeling? And then what is my big 
scary, crazy, audacious goal and then plotting it out to see what do I need to be doing in my everyday life right now in order to get there. So I hope this encourages you in some sense that even though your goals might be large, keep them large, keep them even bigger, but then also break them down. And I feel like I'm just inspiring myself to do the same because the breaking down part is usually where I get stuck. I have no problem creating a large to-do list of things that I want to do in life, but where I do get stuck is truly breaking it down and seeing what can I do today to make that big thing happen. So I hope, here's to not getting stuck, <laughs> here's to moving forward in life. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did. And if you'd like to see other videos like this about self-improvement, about uh, goal setting, anything like that, I love talking this kind of stuff. So please do let me know, but I will catch you on the next video.